This time I'll call the August meeting of the Haywood County Board of Education to order. This time I'd like to ask Mr. Jimmy Rogers if he'd lead us in our board prayer. Board members, you please rise for the prayer and then we'll uh, immediately followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Congress, Heavenly Father, again, we want to thank you for the many blessings you've bestowed upon us. We want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to serve the children of Haywood County. Lord, again, we pray tonight that your, your guidance is upon us. We're continuing to face situations, Lord, that have been unfaced in the, few, in the past. Decisions that have to be made that affect the lives of so many people. Lord, again, I pray that we put our trust in you and you will guide us through these things. Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for diligence in our schools. We want to thank you, Lord. We're about to go to work again to educate children. Our teachers and our staff are preparing. They've never quit preparing, Lord, but we know they're preparing again to start this year and to start it right and start it the best way we can. And please be with our staff, our teachers, our students, and our parents, and our communities that we can all work together and work this thing through that we can all be successful. And that, Lord, soon we'll be able to get to some normalcy within this community and within this world. God and directs us all that we do. We'll give you the praise and the glory for it all. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Under announcements, I would like to announce uh, that Mr. Kirkpatrick w was not able to be here this evening. He is uh, celebrating his anniversary tonight, and tonight uh, Dr. Rogers will not be with us due to uh, a prior commitment at his church. Under announcements, I'd like to announce our next regular board meeting will be Monday, September 14th here at the Education Center at 7 o'clock. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Okay. Is there anything uh, that needs to be added to the agenda this time? Mr. Chairman, the Buildings and Grounds has a couple of items they'd like to bring before the board in, in our agenda. All right. Let's do them right before we do the uh, monthly financial reports. Right before the Finance Committee, we'll do the two items. All right, is there any Thank objection you. to adding those to the item? Okay. Anything else under agenda adjustments? If not, I would entertain a motion we approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Mr. Rogers has made the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Sorry, Mr. Burnett. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being them, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next we have Dr. Putnam presenting. He's on his way, Mr. Francis. Thank you very much. Here he comes. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I uh, wanted to bring special recognition to our uh, maintenance department. Our, our transportation department and Mr. Mark Shepard. Um, good news to share. We will be receiving, or we have been awarded, a total of three buses from the Volkswagen Settlement Clean Air Grant Program. We will receive two yellow buses, which will replace two of our most problematic international 
uh, what they call dirty diesel buses. We will also receive full reimbursement for an activity bus to replace 8009, which is a handicap lift bus that serves the east end of the county. This bus is used for EC transportation, occupational course of study transportation, as well as small teams such as golf and tennis. This will be a uh, Thomas 44 passenger uh, lift bus. So I just wanted to say congratulations uh, and, uh, to our transportation department and uh, make you aware of this uh, great uh, grant that we've received. Thank you, Dr. Putnam, and congratulations to our transportation department. Thank you. Mr. Shepard, thank you. Next on our agenda, we have Mr. Jason Hines. I think he'll be coming in remote. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, tonight, uh, for your uh, information, uh, we are providing the, uh, you should have copies of the uh, teacher turnover report from 2019 and uh, 2020. The teacher, teacher turnover report uh, goes from March, uh, the first one will go from March of 2018 to March of 2019. The second one goes from March of 19 to March of 20. So. Uh, the second one is the most recent. Uh, on the teacher turnover report, you have several uh, reasons for teachers who might leave uh, Haywood County Schools to teach somewhere else. Um, they may have uh, exercised retirement, uh, teaching another school system, teaching another state, a career change, or family relocation are the most used reasons uh, when they fill out a resignation form uh, to leave Haywood County Schools. So in comparing these two charts, if you look at uh, the first one from 2018 to 2019, the important number to look at there is the uh, one important number to look at is the overall attrition rate, which is what the state looks at and how they rank uh, different uh, school systems. Haywood County Schools for the last seven years has hovered around the 11% mark, between 11 and, and 11 and a half. Uh, last year, uh, or year before last, 18 to 19, it was 11.07%. Uh, that, that particular year, you had 13 teachers retire with full benefits. You had 16 resign to teach in another public school system. Seven resigned to teach in another state. Six resigned for a career change completely. And five resigned for a family relocation. Uh, the next year, if you look at 1920, uh, which ends in uh, this past March, uh, Haywood County Schools uh, attrition rate went down a full point, uh, 1.1, it's down to 10.06%. Haywood County Schools went down in every category uh, previously mentioned. Uh, we had 11 retire with full benefits, 13 resigned to teach in another school system, Uh, two resigned to teach in another state. And um, four left for a family relocation. Um, that, uh, the family relocation is the only one, um, you know, that the teacher may or may not have control over. So uh, that's something to keep an eye on as well. Uh, we maintain the same number of teachers as far as uh, how many positions we have, uh, 497 uh, certified teaching positions, actual in-classroom teachers. There are other certified positions such as counselors, social workers, and so forth. Those are not included in this particular report that the state puts out. 
uh, the first year we had 55 teachers uh, leave for one of the reasons listed among and and some other reasons but those are the main ones uh, the next year uh, 1920 we had 50 teachers uh, leave and that's that's fairly common to hover around that number um, but it is coming down uh, and it is coming down significantly from years past uh, uh, particularly those uh, teachers leaving to teach in other districts. Um, in the 2016 school year, it was up to 27 uh, very um, experienced teachers left to teach in other districts. So, so that that number is coming down, um, and we appreciate the work that y'all did to improve the uh, teacher supplement, and we think that's helping as well. Um, as part of this uh, report. One of the things that we are asked to give the state is the teaching areas that are hardest to fill. And for the last seven years, that has remained uh, math, high school math being the 912 math being the most difficult to fill, followed by science, 912 science at the high school level. Uh, school psychologist is very difficult to find. Uh, English language learner uh, teachers are difficult and uh, foreign language is becoming more difficult so so those are the ones that we reported to the state as being difficult to fill that that rounds out the report if there are any questions i'll be happy to answer a question i do have a comment and i'd like to thank our our staff for uh and and again this board not patting anybody on the back but our staff and, and our recommendations in our county has been very strong supportive of Haywood County Schools and our teachers and I think that that's a uh, this is hopefully showing a sign of that because like you say losing teachers to surrounding counties that may pay better or something like that it's uh, we know we've got some great teachers here and, and this board I know uh, myself not this is speaking for our board I feel like as a consensus we really want to do whatever we can to be so competitive because we don't want to lose these good teachers either and we do applaud them and thank them for their for their dedication to Haywood County Schools. Anyone else? Mr. Hines, thank you very much for the, putting the report together and sharing it with the board tonight. Thank you. Yes, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Ms. King, did anyone sign up to address the board and public comments? Okay. Board members, you've had an opportunity to look at the July 13th, July 22nd, July 30th um, regular session minutes. Just trying to entertain a motion that they be approved as presented. Motion to approve. Okay, Ms. Barrett's made the motion. Mr. Henson, you want to second it? Mr. Henson has seconded the motion. Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I'd just like to say that uh, before we do this next session, this board has met, I think this is the 23rd meeting since March 1st. Is that correct? Something like that. We've done, we've done a lot of work. So at this time, we have, I think it's 13 closed session minutes that we approved we wanted to do those in person and we had a chance to do that at our closed session meeting tonight so at this time i'll entertain a motion we approve the listed closed session minutes so we'll moved mr chairman okay mr rogers has made a motion to hear a second 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 with mr burnett any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor there being none we'll vote all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much, board. Next, we have uh, Miss Jenny Wood. Good evening, Chairman Francis, members of the board. For your approval, you have, if you can believe it, the calendar waiver request for the school year 2021-2022. Okay. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, calendar waiver request another time okay we have a motion from mr rogers i hear a second i'll second 
Second by Mr. Francis. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? 20 years on here, I hope this state opens this up one of these days to let us make this decision. Not have to apply for waivers. That's right. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Thank Wood. You. Thank you. Next, we have Ms. Lisa Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Good evening, Chairman Francis, members of the board. Um, I'm here to, to ask for approval for a contract with Dr. Robert Brooks, who is a psychologist um, that will do, a virt will do virtual training for us with our teachers. Um, this training will, will use some, some COVID funds that have been provided, and the training will hope to, to help our teachers and building resilience in our children when hard times and our children have dealt with some really difficult times and and this is an an effort that we're making to support our teachers and to support our children okay at this time we entertain a motion we approve the contract for dr robert brooks so moved mr clark made the motion second with mr burnett is that okay okay any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? Pat, have you had a chance to look over the Okay. So the board attorney's checked off on it. Sounds good. Any other questions or comments? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Okay. Next we have Dr. Putnam again a bunch of policies. Here he comes. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, you have before you uh, for first read uh, policy 3410, testing and assessment program. Um, in section C, it adds requirements for review of time spent on local standardized testing in accordance with uh, new state law, updates legal references, and updates the hyperlinks. You also have 4110, immunization and health requirements for school administration, updates the vaccine requirements to include a booster dose of meningococcal, <laughs> meningococcal, Golly, day, I, I can't even say that. that word. I'll let you read it. It's a really big old word. <laughs> that's that's you know why I'm struggling there. It's all right. <laughs> uh, conjugate vaccine. Uh, then also you have policy 4270, uh, 6145, concussion and head injury. Adds a new section B, which requires student athletes and their parents to view the crash course uh, concussion education video prior to each sports season. We also have 4325, drugs and alcohol, clarifies the statement at paragraph A7 and adds an example of the lawful use of an otherwise prohibited substance that may be approved by the principal. And then 6325, parking areas for students. Those are all of your policies for first read. Those will be uh, tabled for 30 days for public input. Thank you. I'll learn how to pronounce that word before the next I'll one. learn how to say table. <laughs> All right. Um, next um, are the uh, Title IX policies. There were six new ones in total. If you'll remember, we uh, discussed these at work session. They were received uh, two days prior to the, our last work session. Um, and. Uh, we were encouraged uh, by the North Carolina School Board Association to expedite the process, enact these policies, and uh, put them up for approval as quickly as possible, even if that meant uh, foregoing the, the 30 days uh, to do so uh, because uh, of a new federal law that goes into effect August 14th uh, of this month and this year. Okay. I'll give you a, just a quick synopsis to go back over it one, one last time since it, it has been expedited. 
Up until now, the North Carolina School Board Association model policies that reflected the board's general stance against bullying, harassment, and dis discrimination, and then the approach the administration would take to investigate and remedy complaints alleging violations of that general policy were all contained in two master policies. Primarily because the newly adopted Title IX final rule requires a whole new set of procedures for matters relating to sex and gender-based discrimination, the North Carolina School Board Association has overhauled its policies in this area. These new policies break apart the Title IX definitions, informal resolution process, formal complaint investigation process, and potential outcomes into separate policies. Your policies prohibiting discrimination on other bases, uh, for example, disability, are preserved in newly numbered policies, much as they were before. Because the Title IX final rule requires implementation by August 14, 2020, we recommend the board entertain a motion to suspend a, a second reading and to immediately adopt all these policies as presented. So we actually did get ours put up for uh, first read, even though it wasn't the 30 days, so we, we do have the opportunity uh, for that uh, second approval. Um, I've also forwarded those to Mr. Smathers. He had a chance to look at those, and I'll stop if he wants to add anything. That's good. And we've not had any public input on those at this point in time. No, sir. We have not had any public input on those. Um, and so I'll read off those numbers. It's 17, 10, 40, 20, 72, 30, 17, 20, 40, 30, 72, 35, 17, 25, 40, 35, slash 72, 36, 17, 26, slash 4036 slash 7237 policy 4329 slash 7311 and policy 7232 all of those uh, are for your consideration or, or approval okay at this time um since we did get a chance to uh have public input do you think we need to suspend the rules for the 30 days Part of it. We got to put them in the Okay. We could always come back and revise if we need to. Okay. I think that I mentioned that last time when we had I think we did as well on, so the, on the other meeting. We need to, yeah. Okay, I'll entertain a motion that we uh, approve the policies that Mr. Putnam just enumerated. <laughs> so moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rogers has made a motion. I hear a second. Second. Is that Mr. Henson? Any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. All right. In addition to those newly adopted policies, now that you've uh, approved it, uh, approved the new policies, uh, also coinciding with these new policies are uh, policy revisions for existing policies you already have. Um, it is also at the encouragement of the North Carolina School Board Association that these be revised in, and adopted in conjunction with those new policies. And they are uh, policy 1730 slash 4022 slash 7231. Next policy is for revision would be 4040 slash 7310. The next policy would be 4331. And the last policy would be 4340. And so that's adjustments to reflect the newly adopted policies okay. and existing policies. Do you want to, want to make a motion to... Uh, okay, Ms. Barrett's made a motion to uh, revise the policies that Dr. Putnam just presented to us. Uh, and enumerated them for the record. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. Second, Mr. Rogers. 
Any uh, questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, just one more. <laughs> That's right. Did we do that top one yeah. up there? Did we? This go ahead. Yes, sir. We've got two more things to do, but go ahead. Okay. So because you adopted the new policies as recommended by the uh, North Carolina School Board Association, and because you revised those policies, uh, the, the final recommendation of the North Carolina School Board Association is to rescind two policies. The first policy being 1710 slash 4021 slash 7230. That's the first policy for rescension. The second policy is 1720 slash 4015 slash 7225 rescension. Also directly related to the new Title IX policies and the revised existing policies in, in accordance with the new Title IX regulations. Okay. These two would be for rescension or removal. And this is because what we just approved already addresses what's in these policies? Pretty yes, sir. Okay. These would actually inappropriately and inaccurately address the new Title IX regulations. Correct. At this time, I entertain a motion that we rescind the two policies as mentioned before. I'll make a motion to rescind the policies as okay. presented. We have a, a motion from Mr. Francis to hear a second. Say. Mr. Clark, any question or discussion on the motion on the floor? Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'd just like to maybe give a little bit of input here. The reason these policy numbers, a lot of them have 1700 series, 4000 series, 7000 series, a lot of these policies reflect governing principals, students, personnel, I think it's just made a comment for the general public, I know our board knows this, but uh, this, these policies are affecting staff, students, uh, the governor board regulations for the community and everything, so just to let you know that that's kind of why it's separated in different numbers and formats and it's sectional, just to kind of give, a, give them the information that this is covering the whole school system. Very good. Did we vote on that? I've lost no, track of that. Okay. Any other questions or comments? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. And we need to go back up. The 1320. 1320 and 3560. The ones 27 and 3460. We need to. It's under item number 14. Okay. We tabled the other ones, and this is the second reading on the. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, for second reading. And I don't have that in front of me. You need to give him those. Thank you. Thank you. Good catch, Mr. Chairman. Well, I think a lot of folks call me. <laughs> and Mr. Francis, thank you. Yes. Uh, for second reading also, after we've made it through the Title IX minutia, uh, is policy 30, 1320-3560. That's the Title I Parent and Family Engagement. The next policy uh, for second reading was 2127, New Board Member Technology Use. And the last one for second reading is uh, policy 3460, graduation requirements. Okay, at this time I entertain a motion we approve the listed three um, policies for second reading. Okay, Ms. Barrett's made a motion that we approve them. Do I hear a second? Second. Served by Mr. Henson. Any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Dr. Putnam. All right, thank you. Next on our agenda, we added two items, I think it was, from the Building and Grounds Committee, so I'll recognize Mr. Jimmy Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Building and Grounds uh, Committee has met previously, and uh, 
our first motion is uh, spend a hundred thousand dollars to put padding down both sidelines at Pisgah High School and Tuscola High School's football stadiums when we're doing the re-turfing and the remodeling of the, of the stadiums. Uh, I'll explain further. That's our motion. Here we have a motion from Mr. <clears throat> Rogers. I hear second. Second. Second, Mr. Burnett. You know, Any questions or discussion on a motion on the floor? A little more clarification on that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the football stayed in the sidelines according to safety guidelines that they were recommending when we were redoing the stadiums was to be 15 feet on the sidelines and end zones. We're able to accomplish that on the end zones. The sidelines were not able to accomplish that due to the linear visitor stands and also the home stands. That would be, you wouldn't have enough walkway in between those between the field and the fence line. So we got 10 feet and this is the other, they said if you can't do the 15 feet, they, they recommend putting padding on the sideline fences and that's an extra protection and safety for our children. Uh, that's that's the main reason we've incorporated this part. Uh, the handicap accessibility, everything else was added, and this was one step that we we did not have at that time. But also, we had a tremendous amount of savings in the total project. So, uh, and and we all got to looking back and said, "Oh, let's let's make sure we get it right while we're doing it." So it's another safety feature that we're adding to the project. I'd like to point out that these funds are lottery funds. They cannot be used for salaries, teacher pay, or any other thing except capital improvements. And I just want to make that clear. Uh, there's a lot of confusion about what lottery funds can be used for, but these funds are to be used exclusively for capital improvements. And this is a very important one due to safety. And have, haven't we already put aside some some money for the turf replacement? It's it's already it's already it's already, already appropriated. It's already All that's been done, and this is and it came in under bids. Yes. Came in under bids, so we got a, quite a bit of savings. But this we felt like was very important. Any other questions or comments before we vote? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, Mr. Chairman, thank you. We have one more. Uh, this one here is uh, the building's ground would like to make a motion that we surplus the cab and chassis and the motor only off of a uh, 2008 Ford F450 truck. It's a plumbing truck. Now there is a bed on that truck that will be removed and be reused on another vehicle that's able to be operated. This vehicle is inoperable and uh, so we're going to get rid of the vehicle but save the bed to use as a replacement unit sometime in the future when it's needed. Okay. We have a motion from Mr. Rogers. Do I hear a second? Second. Sir, Mr. Henson, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? I guess I'm discussed before we had the second, Mr. Chair, and I apologize for that. Well, that's all right. That's not a problem. All right, any other further discussion? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Chairman, that is all the building and ground has at this time, so thank you. Thank you very much for your work on the building and grounds committee. Thank you all very much. Next, we have our finance committee chair, Mr. Ronnie Clark. Mr. Chairman, earlier tonight, the finance committee met and we approved the monthly, uh, regular monthly financial reports, and I need the uh, full board approval now, please. I'm bringing the motion for that. Okay, we have a motion from the Mr. Clark from the Finance Committee. Do I hear a second? Second. Second, Mr. Henson. Any uh, questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Next, we have Dr. Nolton. I see him coming now for our personnel. Well, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, 
those who are logged on uh, staff or streaming wise uh, at this time I bring before you the personnel that was uh, shared previously in closed session for your information we have nine separation from employment uh, and six employee employee status changes for your approval we have 17 employments 21 employee status changes one employee coach and one volunteer coach. Mr. Chairman, this time I make a motion that we approve the personnel as presented. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Rogers. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Chair, Mr. Clark, any questions or discussion on the motion on the floor? There being none, we'll vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Well, Mr. Chairman, at this time I'd like to uh, introduce hopefully the last uh, introductions uh, prior to the beginning of school of senior administrative staff. Some of these were um, hired or changed uh, positions several months ago and some of these are brand new. Uh, at this time I would invite uh, Todd Barbie to log on. Todd Barbie has agreed to be our innovative partnership coach for a very large $1.5 million grant for Central Haywood High School. He'll be working with the central office staff uh, on that project, and I want to thank him for taking that role. And uh, Todd, if you would uh, come on and um, say something that makes me look real smart. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, welcome to my kitchen. Um, Mr. Chairman, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Barker, Dr. Nolte, and the board, thank you for placing me in a position that I really needed for me and my family. Um, the, having, uh, the hardest thing I've done is stepping down from Maisel Middle, um, but I needed to do it because it's for my family. Um, that's a wonderful school and with the, the, with the best teachers. Um, when it comes down to it, my family has been neglected. My wife has, has been neglected. And I just needed to do what I needed to do for, for them. Um, my family deserves a dad and not a principal. When, um, when I told my son, Brooks, who will be a sixth grader at Wazel Middle, uh, this coming year, when I told him uh, that I was not going to be there, he said, well, if it doesn't mean you're going to be on your phone or your computer all night, that means that's okay. Um, so, but regardless, you know, I'm so excited about uh, working with uh, Wendy Rogers. I mean, she is so passionate about making Central Haywood into something different. Um, and the drive company that we have partnered with, um, this is going to be such a good grant. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll enable the teachers to, at Central to, to just to, to get on the same page. Um, and so the kids can not only graduate with a uh, high school diploma, but also graduate with some HCC credits and hopefully with a certificate that will enable them to go into the work workforce. So I just thank the board and Dr. Bill uh, for allowing me this. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Uh, you'll do a great job. We appreciate the work you have already done and that you will do the next three years um, managing that grant for us. Uh, I, I guess I don't need to introduce Wendy Rogers with nice kind words because Todd's already done that. Yeah. But Wendy has agreed uh, to return to her high school roots and to be the uh, principal at Central Haywood High School. She's been working with a number of people down there already and they have a number of great plans in place. We actually met today virtually uh, and talked about something. So at this time I present uh, Wendy Rogers, the principal at Central Haywood. Good evening, Dr. Nolte. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nolte, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Barker, uh, members of the board. It is a great 
privilege to work in Haywood County Schools. Uh, I've always said to teach, lead, and work with Haywood County School um, employees. It's just I'm among the best educators here, and that's an amazing thing. Leaving the elementary world, um, I had to think a couple times about it because it has been a great experience over the last 10 years. But um, this is a very familiar transition to me, as Dr. Nolte just said. I'm uh, coming from a high school experience with a background at Tuscola in teaching and leading with the administration. To continue to lead uh, with educators in a high school who's willing to serve students and help them transition from uh, high school to the workplace or on to post-secondary experiences, uh, that's beyond exciting. And the work that uh, Mr. Barbie and I have already done here at Central Haywood with the drive and the Central Haywood staff, uh, I'm I'm just ready to go. It's going to be a great year. So I've been blessed to serve in this district for over 20 years, and my roots run really deep here. Uh, born and raised in Haywood County is a great thing to uh, be able to brag about. And uh, to give back to our county and to this district in this way is just a, certainly an honor. So I've been led by outstanding leaders in our district for the past 20 years, supported by great coworkers, and been able to work with some amazing amazing teachers and support staff and I know that's just going to continue here at Central Haywood High School so tonight I say thank you and I look forward to great things at Central Haywood High School and uh, go dogs. <laughs> thank you Wendy. Uh, at this time I want to introduce uh, Todd Trantham. Uh, he has served us well for a long time at the elementary level, uh, district level, and um, high school level. He's returning to the elementary world uh, where he started as a teacher. And uh, Todd, we appreciate you. I've seen a lot of uh, detailed work and organizational work already with you. And um, uh, I'm just glad you're at Hazelwood. And if you would, when you finish, if you will introduce your new assistant principal. Thank you, Dr. Dalty. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, Dr. Dolte, Central Office staff, I want to thank you for putting your trust in me. Uh, this was a difficult decision to, to finally decide to make this move. Talk to Dr. Nolte about it, but, but I could not have asked to inherit a better, a better situation. This staff has been so welcoming and I am excited to kick things off tomorrow. Um, now, one of the first things I got to face when, when I came down here was the fact that I found my assistant principal was leaving and uh, going to the high school and so I was fortunate enough in that process to convince a young lady who was originally from Haywood County to come back home from Jackson County and join our admin team so now let me introduce to you uh, the new a assistant principal at Hazelwood Elementary School Miss Bridget Brooks Mr. Chairman members of the board Dr. Nolte and the central office staff I just want to express my sincere thankfulness for the opportunity to serve Hazelwood Elementary in the role of assistant principal. It is an honor to serve the students, families, faculty and staff, and the community members of Hazelwood. This is coming home for me, and I am tremendously grateful for this opportunity, and it would not be possible without your support. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Bridget. Um, welcome to, welcome back, I guess I should say. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce Heather Blackman, the principal at Tuscola. They're rocking and rolling up there. I think they gave out, uh, I don't know the exact number, between 200 and 250 Chromebooks today. I heard that everyone had on a mask except maybe just a couple parents, but we gave them one <laughs> and they used it. So, uh, uh, Ms. Blackman, if you would introduce your new assistant principal at this time, that would be great. I saw her on there earlier. She doesn't come on in the second aisle introducing. Okay, must have a technical difficulty. So no worries. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting this gentleman. Uh, we were able to uh, uh, recruit uh, into our county a very capable high school math teacher uh, who also uh, has a lot of uh, good experience and has an administrative degree. His uh, personality is infectious, and we look forward to him uh, staying with us for quite some time. Uh, let me introduce to you Billy Harold. 
Um, <clears throat> good evening. I would uh, like to thank Dr. Nolte, uh, Dr. Putnam, Ms. Barker, and the board uh, for this opportunity. Um, I'm especially thankful to Ms. Blackman uh, for giving me this opportunity to advance my career and be an assistant principal. Um, I'm very excited to be moving over to Haywood County and to be a Mountaineer. Uh, it's going to be a great opportunity for me. Um, and most importantly, I need to thank my wife uh, for this opportunity. She's been very supportive in this move. Um, and lastly, you can't beat this view out the window. That's what it's all about. So I'm glad to be on the hill and be a part of Tuscola. Go Mavis. Thank you, Mr. Harold. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman Board, thank you. There's Ms. Blackman. Uh, her, uh, <laughs> Her, I, I can have a little technical difficulties getting on uh, off of mute and on the camera, but uh, I also just want to, to uh, thank all of you so much uh, for the opportunity to work with this young man. Um, he is a math teacher that we were able to steal away from Buncombe County, and I'm awfully glad we did. Um, <laughs> and I have to brag on his his already the things that he's done at Tuscola in terms of looking at our math classes and evaluating some data for us and um i'm just i'm thrilled to be working with him he's going to be such a great asset to our to our leadership team so thank you very much thank you miss blackman thank you mr chairman and board thank you congratulations to all those uh, that we've recognized tonight and thanks for coming on and and i know you'll do wonderful and great things for haywood county schools and our students yeah thanks for being part of haywood county schools like we said earlier got good people Keep them coming. There's nothing else to come before the board this evening. The meeting is adjourned.